IMF, World Bank, all other institutions, they make African countries jump through hoops. Loans will never be able to pay. The US, when they borrow money, they're getting it in 1.5, 1.9 interest rate. Africans, when they get the same amount of money, they're paying 9, 10%. The people who don't need a break, they get a break. The ones who need a break, they don't get a break. The sheer survival of the World Bank IMF is based on the fact that African countries and, and many other developing countries do not succeed. Their success is based on our failure. That has to change. And guess who can make that change? We, the children of Africa, we, the Africans, are the ones who have to say, we know your game now. Enough is enough. We're not playing it anymore. And this is where the diaspora come in. There are more Ghanaian doctors in New York City than in, in the entire country of Ghana. There are more doc Nigerian doctors in LA than in the entire country of Nigeria. So let's be serious here. What Africa needs is capacity, capacity, capacity. And that capacity is in the diaspora. So it behooves us to bring the diaspora together. Let them understand what is really going on in our Africa. Diaspora are not going home. Diaspora are angry about Africa because they are not understanding the root cause of why Africa is where it is today. They think getting rid of a president will take care of the problem. Far from it. That president is just going to be replaced by another one who is going to equally suffer from the same difficult environment to work in. So let's look at an Africa that must be free to take care of herself, an Africa that's free from exploitation from outsiders. The multinationals who are stealing from Africa every day in broad daylight. I use an example of the DRC. If you ever fly very low over the DRC, you'll see tarmacs in the jungle. You'll see 747s flying into DRC, picking up minerals and flying right out. The same multinationals are responsible for arming young people and giving them MK-16s. Because why? Their satellites in the skies are telling them where that village is. There's, there are lots of diamonds. So what do they do? Arm young people, drag them up, and send them to go chop off a few heads. The rest of the village runs away, so they come behind and do their illegal mining. We black people must understand what is really going on. Because what we are shown instead is, oh, look at those Africans killing each other. There are some serious games that have been played in Africa for far too long. And once we understand that, we can strategize as to how we can begin to bring the difference and bring the change that Africa needs. And that change can only come if the African diaspora are united and the Wakanda villages, as I call them. It is our organized way of saying, starting with one African diaspora center of excellence, it will be a new city, a developmental hub that we can then take from there Every sector is developed. Take healthcare. How many doctors do we need in this region to take care of this many people? We pick up education, same thing. We pick up engineering. We pick up electricity. How many megawatts of power do we have in the region? How many do we need? Be it solar, be it wind, be it hydro, be it geothermal, be it nuclear. The question I had right from the get-go, uh, first, is back to the euro. Secondly, it's still going to be printed in, uh, uh, in France. Third, they may try to say we are eliminating the uh, colonial tax, but they are replacing it with the uh, foreign exchange tax. These countries are very capable of negotiating their own deals. Their funds don't have to go through the French uh, Central Bank. Uh, even countries wanting to trade with African countries, they don't have to go through French Central Bank. So there are all those technicalities that are just stupid. What's needed is complete separation. France has got to get out of Africa, really, honestly. Enough is enough to take $500 billion out of Africa. I mean, it is insanity of the highest order. In countries that are supposedly poor, and making those countries fund French education, French healthcare system, create jobs for French youth, while we are struggling in our country. It's no longer sustainable. President Macron needs to wake up and smell the coffee. And the African youth are the ones he's gonna to have to deal with. The African youth are not taking it anymore. They want what belongs to them. Financial institutions, though they, them too, if I had my way, all the African heads of states should stop paying back any loans that were given by IMF and World Bank. Those loans have been paid gazillion times over. The drumbeat was getting louder about me becoming the chairman of the African Union. I disregarded it because it's nothing that I've ever uh, thought about. But increasingly, as we are looking at the implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area, you have to understand the role of the African Union Commission is to be the implementer of the decisions that are agreed upon by the African heads of states. So it's important that we not get a career diplomat 
who is now only looking for their next position. We need somebody who can think outside the box. We need a business-minded person because people are dying, my dear young child. We've got to realize that children are dying every day. Women are dying every day. Millions of youth are unemployed and we're too busy being diplomatic, not hitting the nail in the head. If we don't get an African Union chair who realizes that you're under the table and they're making you fight with your brothers and sisters as to who got the larger chunk of the crumbs under the table, that way you never have to talk about what's on the table. That is a blind chair. We need somebody who gets it. I do know that there's a need for major disruption at the African Union level. If I were to become chair of the African Union, I want to bring disruption. Women in general, actually, we have a tendency to just apologize and we just don't think we, we're quite able to, uh, to get there. Granted, our challenges are real. Let's make a commitment to say we will succeed. Nobody is superior to us. We will get the job done. Let's find strength within each other that we are going to take care of ourselves. We're taking care of our neighborhoods, we're taking care of our homes, we're taking care of our mother Africa. That commitment and that change of mindset, once we have the change of mindset, the game is over. Because you can take me wherever you take me. If my mind is in the right place, there's nothing you can do to me. In African culture, we the women have always ruled. The men might think uh, that they have ruled, but behind the scenes, it was always us. I like to share the story of Nanaya Asantwa. She was the gatekeeper of the uh, golden stool in the Ashanti kingdom. When the British were trying to take the golden stool from the Ashanti people, the men had given in. They were ready to give up the golden stool in exchange for the king who was in exile in Mauritius. But you got to understand that the golden stool is where the spirit of the Ashanti people is housed. So when you give up the golden stool, you have given up the spirit of a people, our men, our Ashanti men, were ready to give up the, uh, the spirit of the Ashanti people. Nanaya Asandua, as the gatekeeper of the golden stool, she said, absolutely not. And let me paraphrase her speech. She said, I shall call upon all my female sisters. We will pick up arms and we will fight the British till the last one of us is down. We then picked up arms, organized, and they fought the British and defended the golden stool. That is the power that the African woman has. But my message to the African woman is to say, you, the African woman, without you, there would not be any other races. And for that reason, you have a very important role to play in the world affairs. Once you understand that, take your role. No one should ever make you feel inferior. As mothers, as grandmothers, as sisters, as nieces, Let's come together and let not only our husbands and our brothers and our uncles know we need to work together as equals because it's going to take all of us working together to make our Africa what we want it to be.